Scott from South Florida Insider, and I'm here with Tony Brandt. And Tony, you know, definitely a diverse crowd. It, it seems like coming each day and stuff. You got people from even out of this country, and then you also yeah. got different age groups all over. Yeah. Are you able to find the balance? Uh, it just takes coming from doing a lot of shows. Um, I've done thousands of shows in this theater uh, since the beginning of the show, and you just got to you got to be a able to roll with the flow and do a lot of improvising so it's, since it's all different age groups and uh, and I also occasionally will change things in the show depending on what kind of group it is. And how many years has it been uh, doing this now? Almost 10 years. We started the show in 2000, in June of 2000. What, was it all here though? It was It was here. It was, we had a different, the show was a little bit of a different, more of a traditional magic show in the beginning mm -hmm. and after a couple of years uh, my background was comedy, acting and improvisational comedy, and uh, I had done as much of that as I had done magic, and I sort of convinced them to let me make it more into a comedy and magic show. So we slowly started changing the show, and over the course of time, it uh, evolved into you know what it is now. How are you able to get like it? I, it just seems you really feed off of the crowd. I mean, yeah. they, uh, definitely the improvisation mm -hmm. of it all. I mean, over and over. How are how are you really able to even do that? Is it just something clicks in your head? Well, I did a lot of theater. You know, I didn't. I did a lot of uh, a lot of acting uh, before I went into magic full time. I started doing magic when I was a kid, and then I got out of magic, and then I got into acting, and I did films and commercials and stuff like that, took a lot of acting classes, and just learned to be real aware of the audience and not just to myself doing a trick. You know, I, I, I really pay attention to what they're saying and the, the way they react to things, and I, I spend as much time on that as I do anything. And, and what do you think really, I mean, as you kind of elaborated, how is it that you stand out? I mean, like, what... The intimate setting of it all, I mean, this isn't a typical setting for a show. I mean, it really f feels yeah. like the crowd's really a part of the show. How are you able to, like, kind of intertwine that? I think it just comes from, a, I do a lot of stuff with the audience where they, I get nine people on stage on average on, on, during the course of the show. And I give them stuff to do, if you noticed. I don't ever just usually have them standing there. And I give them something to do. And then a lot of the comedy comes out of the way they do it. Like what they say or if I've got them you know, doing something with me, or the dance, or whatever. That is, every, every show it's different. I never know what they're going to do or say, and that can be really, really funny. And uh, I, I try not to have a barrier. In theater, you know, they call it a fourth wall, where you break the wall down. Most plays, you don't pretend the audience is there, you know. <clears throat> but I do the opposite. I really focused on the audience, and, you know, get them to yell stuff out. And, and I just try to talk to them a lot, not at them. And that gets them more into the show as opposed to just watching the show. They get to be part of it. If you could kind of interpret your show as maybe a situation or a movie, how would you interpret it? I Well, the show has been called uh, sort of like uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway, but with magic in it. And I like that because the Whose Line Is It Anyway show is all about comedy and improvising with some you know the people on stage and with the audience. And... I do a lot of pop culture in the in the show. If you noticed, I have a lot of lot of impressions I do of you know famous people and what have you, and it's more of a you know I I, I like that idea of it, that it's really a, a group kind of thing. It's not just them watching me. It, it, if you could define it though, kind of as like a, a situation like. I don't know, maybe somebody's stuck on the toilet with, trying to reach for the toilet paper. Uh -huh. I mean, just anything. Uh, what, what, what would you give it a situation kind of as for people that are unaware of like the co comedic uh, situations you put them in? Oh, you mean like what I have them do? Yeah, what would you have them do or your comedy as a whole? Well, you know, I, I mean, I sort of... Is there an analogy you can think of? Yeah, I don't, I don't know really. I don't, I don't really know how to compare it to anything. It's, it's sort of a combination of of uh, it's just more of an improv situation than anything because I don't ever know what they're going to say. I don't ever really know what I'm going to say. I mean, I have certain lines that I know I'm going to do, but I'll go off off tangent, off yeah. on a tangent that may go totally in a in a different direction. 
and you just never know. So it's pretty unpredictable. I'd say it's unpredictable. And so. for, for people interested to kind of get an idea of you before they decide to come out to the show, uh -huh. where can they look you up? They can go on uh, wonderworksonline.com or they can go on tonybrent.com. All right. Well, I appreciate yeah. your time. Thanks sure. a lot. You bet.